This is a short explanation of how the Rebel Warriors Zumo Buzzer code works. So you may have already seen our coding time lapse and the demo of our robot and wonder how everything all works together. So right now I'm going to launch our program in Simulink uh, if I can find it. Alright, it's here. Zumo Buzzer Template. Oh, launch quickly. Alright, so as you can tell, this is our program right here. Um, we, the project guidelines originally just had the need to turn on the light and implement a uh, sound to the Zumo buzzer, but we took it a step farther and included a button, a uh, song, and a uh, light sequence in addition, which actually, oh, oops, which actually beats along at the same rhythm as the song. So how we did it was the first step, we added a button to it to control the buzzer instead of um, just a single always on or always off. And then we originally had a set frequency at 600 hertz, but then we decided to take it a step further and try playing a song with it. So we added what's called a repeating sequence stair block which actually, uh, once I open it, all right. So you see this array of values here, and it sends those arrays with a sample time of 0.2 seconds for each value. So for this one, we found the we found the frequencies of the Happy Birthday song online and entered them into the array you see here and set the sample time at 0.2 seconds. So each single number or each single frequency plays for 0.2 seconds. And we also found that we had to add a zero, well, a, a zero hertz in between each set in order for the robot to have, to, to play happy birthday with a discernible um, time within each note. So that's that. And when we run it, here, I'll launch the scope so you can see what happens when you run it. Well, once it starts. All right. Uh, I shall try that again. Auto scale. All right, so it looks like this. Um, as you can tell, we be, because it's it's called a repeating sequence stair, so it repeats after each set. Uh, I'll zoom in a bit, and as you can tell, it plays the Happy Birthday song in a set of frequencies that we set for it, and then it repeats the frequencies infinitely. Well, while the button is pressed down, the original guidelines said that we only had to have the light turn on on the robot, but then we took this a step farther and implemented it so that it flashed at the same rhythm as the song here. So the song here had a sample time of 0 0.2 seconds or 0 0.6 seconds for each note individually. So for the pulse generator, um, we set the period to 0 0.6 seconds and the pulse width to 50% of the period and set the amplitude to one, so it either sent a one or a zero to pin 13, which controlled the LED light. And it took a bit of work here, but we actually found a way for it to um, flash while the button is pressed down. So there's this thing called an N logical operator, which basically as the name implies, means that the signal will only get sent through if both of the values have a 1 or a 0 as the um, value. So here, so therefore, um, pin 13, so because of that, pin 13 only gets sent um, the value of 1 whenever both the button here is pressed down 
and the pulse generator is also sending the value of 1 to the LED light. And I'll show you how it looks on the scope here. Oh, well that's because the button isn't pressed down. Um, right, for now, I'll just send in a uh, control value of 1 to show you what happens when, you, when the button is pressed down. Well, alright. So here I'm sending a constant of 1, and I'm launching the scope here. I think a sample time of 10 seconds would be much better. Alright. So, as you can tell, um, it switches between a 1 and a 0, with 1 standing for the LED light is on, and 0 standing for the LED light is off. So that's how we did it. Um, I hope you enjoyed and see you next week. Oh, and if you have any questions, just add to the discussion below. Thank you.